Hello and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Hull City in Football Manager 2018. And if you watch these episodes every day as they uh, get released, you might have noticed that there were no episodes yesterday. And that's because I just had too much to do in real life. And then uh, it was um, Champions League uh, in the evening that I wanted to watch. And and yeah, sometimes these episodes uh, take a few hours uh, to record and uh, I just didn't have the time for it. But today we have another episode and today we have another interesting game. And since last episode, I played quite a few games. Because last episode was all the way back here when we lost versus Watford. As you can see, I played quite a few games. And it's been some ups and some downs. So after the loss versus Watford, we, won we bounced back with a win versus Burnley. But then ASAP, another loss uh, versus West Ham. And when I played West Ham, they were like in the middle of the table. Like 10th place or something like that. But they have had a really, really good stint now. They had like eight games in a row or something like that without a loss. So right now they're actually in fourth place. And if I would have known that, we would definitely have recorded this episode. But yeah, when I played them, they were like in the middle of the table. But they have just kept on winning. Uh, then we got a decent win away versus Southampton. And then another win versus uh, Bournemouth. This was actually a bit frustrating because you can see... Afonso Sosa only scored in the 88 minutes and we were completely dominated in this game. I was like crazy all that attacking and in the end we managed to score. But yeah, we definitely should have been able to seal the deal a lot earlier. And then we got a decent uh, win at home versus West Brom. Um, and then last game, it was the FA Cup and it was a very frustrating, annoying loss. Once again versus Watford as we lost against them uh, in the last episode. And we lost against them in the cup and I really feel like we didn't deserve this result. And they scored the winner, I believe, really late. Yeah, look at this. Three minutes into extra time, they scored the winner. So, yeah, that was a frustrating one. And um, today we are playing Arsenal. And Arsenal is a team that is struggling this season. They are currently in 11th place. But remember, this very close there. So, like, just in a few rounds, they can be up here is something where. But still, they are definitely struggling this season. And uh, we are currently fifth uh, place, uh, one point behind West Ham. So, the Champions League dream is alive. But there's a lot of teams competing for for that Champions League dream. And as you can see, we're falling down a bit here. La Padula haven't scored in quite a few games, and. Uh, as you might remember, there's a few episodes, like every single guy here on average rating was from our team. No, not a single one shows up. So, um, yeah, we, we need to step up and get back into the way we were rolling before. But yeah, Arsenal is struggling a bit. And I believe we have a, might have a fitness advantage because they played um, a game much closer to this game compared to what we did. Because they played a, a cup game like three days before or something. Well, well, we have had a decent amount of rest. If you take a look at the date here, you can see we are in the middle of the January transfer window. And uh, I haven't signed anybody new, but I, if you remember from, from the first episode of this season, I had made um, a signing that wouldn't join us until uh, January. So he has joined us now. And it's uh, the midfielder Lee Farrell from Scotland. And uh, as you can see, He's a sensational regen. Look at these stats. He's fantastic. He's only 18 years old with these stats. Definitely one of the best regions I've ever seen. Uh, so we paid a fair amount of money for him. But I'll pay that amount of money any day for a regen that looks like this. And of course he needs some tutoring. And I'm currently waiting for, for one of my tutors to be ready to tutor him. But hopefully for the next season or something like that. He will be really high in determination and be driven or a professional or, or something like that. So I'm definitely going to tutor him as soon as one of my good tutors become available for that. But yeah, I think this is a very good signing. And because we signed him, I actually transfer listed Dembele. Uh, nobody's interested in him though, but I feel like it's his time because he's currently 33 years old. So his stats will be declining. It's not that he's bad. It's just that uh, with, uh, with that signing, he will play even less games. And I might as well try to sell him while I can get some money for him. Because, uh, yeah, as I said, like he is old and uh, his stats will decline. You can see some red arrows here already. 
Uh, but let's wait to see in that does. And actually talking about uh, transfers, a lot of my players is wanted by other clubs. A lot, of, and I've been getting a, quite a few offers. I've been getting a crazy amount of offers from for Costas. I've gotten like five or six offers. Both Arsenal, Liverpool, Tottenham has sent me offers. Some of the clubs have sent me multiple offers. And I might actually sell him. And uh, the highest offer I've gotten, I believe it was from Arsenal, was actually for 35 million euros. And I am, because if I, if I get an offer for something like 40 million euros, I will probably take it. And the reason for that is, he has been very good to me. And he's not bad, but I feel like he kind of had reached his max potential. Yeah, I know this one says that he could still improve, but he has barely improved at all during the last year. And looking at the, the current potential ability thing here, it looks like it's reached its full potential. And yeah, as I said, like he's not bad, but if I can get maybe 40 million for him, I am considering selling him, even though I would prefer to... Uh, to uh, make transfers like this during the summer, so I actually have some time uh, to uh, replace him. But an offer, I have some options. If we sell him, first off, of course, we have young Selic, and Selic is more or less at the same level as him. A little weaker on, on the technical side, but stronger on, on the mental side. So that would just mean that Selic would play even more. Maybe I would use the money to sign somebody new, but we also have the option to, to recall Lucas that's currently loaned out. So uh, that's also an option. So we'll have to wait and see what happens there. Also been getting offers for both uh, Calabria and uh, Moreno. Currently declined all of them. I have no intention in selling any of them. Um, for the midfielders, I've got any offers th there. I don't think so. Oh yeah, Bowen picked up an injury last game, but uh, it's just a short one. He will be back in business soon. And uh, yeah, that's the current situation. I've been talking a lot. We need to play some football here, I believe. And it's time for us to play against Arsenal. And as I said, I hope we have the fitness advantage. Because we should have it. Because they played a game uh, much more recent uh, than we did. Um, about, um, another thing about the transfer window. Real Madrid have actually sold players for about 200... Or more or less exactly 240 million euros during this window. They sold uh, Asensio to PSG and they sold one for like 140 and then they sold um, Theo Hernandez to I believe it was City for 100 million euros so uh, they have got a lot of money it's going to be interesting to see if they decide to spend it on something they're currently in second place in La Liga so they would be interested in um, would be interested in improving yeah, it's going to be interesting to see if uh, if Real Madrid goes all crazy for with, with all that money they they currently got. And uh, I have of course been scouting like a madman, but um, I need to find something. I've actually made a few offers to to uh, some youngsters that are becoming free transfers, like players around twenty years old. Yes, to hope to maybe flip somebody. I mean, oh my God, it's an already a potential injury for uh, the Ox. This is very bad since Bowen is out for like another week. Um, but I'm gonna keep him on for, for now. Um, but yeah, just like some youngsters that maybe you can flip like with high potential, loan them out for two. Oh, that's what really ugly challenge. That could be a red card. It could be a straight up red card because it looks really, really bad. And it it is, it is, it is. And I understand that, because that was a really, really ugly challenge. That's, of course, good news for us. Source of the free kick into the box. Cleared. Cleared once again. Shamblain picks it up. But yeah, that's definitely very good news for us, because we are playing them away at the Emirates, so we need every single bit of help we can get. Everything we can use to our advantage. And uh, there is Shamblain, Lapadula. All the way out to pass slack on the right flank and early close and here is Lapadula. And I was talking about earlier, it's been like five games since the last time he scored. I almost become a little bit worried about him because he has been our goal scoring machine. He is the top goal scorer of the Premiership. And finally he is back in business with a very, very important goal. He gives us the lead away versus Arsenal at the Emirates. Beautiful, a beautiful pass slash cross there from, from pass slack also. And Paslak once again, we're throwing Branagan. 
Back to Paslak. Paslak with an early cross this time for Lapadula. Afonso Sosa. Karigbo. Karigbo. Paslak. Can he get another assist maybe? Oh my god! That was actually a beautiful cross. Uh, I'm not sure if Gnabry is the strongest player uh, when it comes to, to the heading um, department, but a very beautiful cross by, by Paslak. Uh, every, every highlight starts with Paslak. This is actually what a day he's having. He's on fire. Chamberlain, Paslak, Paslak, Afonso Sosa, Branaga, Argbo, Sosa. Go for Alberto Moreno on the left flank. He breaks through into the box. All the way for Oud. Uh, look at this. Afonso Sosa. He uh, missed the header, but then he got another chance. And uh, beautiful. And uh, we can see it here from, from the replay. First of this one by Alberto Moreno. Fantastic. Sosa in the top bar and bounces out and no mistake. And another highlights. I start with Paslak. Have we seen that one before? I'm not sure. Maybe. Have we? And um, well, I'm not sure what's up with that. That's Peter Shek. He must be getting pretty old right now. Because this is, what is this, like the fourth season or something like that, and he is pretty old from the beginning. But yes, as a goalkeeper, he can, can stay strong at quite some age. I'm not sure where this highlight is heading. There's been a lot of back and forth here, but here is Afonso Sosa. Going for Cargo, Gnabry, Gnabry. Look at, look at Moreno on the left flank, but we are going the other direction, or maybe not. Afonso Sosa actually goes for Moreno. Moreno with his right foot. You don't see that very often, but a weak header from Chamberlain. Not sure how uh, that potential injury is uh, affecting him. Running out with the corner. Chamberlain. Gnabry. And that's no trouble at all for, for Pete to check. But I mean, we are creating a lot of chances, and that's pleasing. But maybe that wasn't it, because here is Arsenal. Maybe it's uh, a highlight in the other direction. This is worrisome. This is really worrisome. This is very dangerous. Oh my god, look at his defense. Nobody marks him, but it's a beautiful save by Yo Hart. But uh, as I said so many times before, I have this uh, setting to mark tighter. And they were. Oh my god! That was a screamer. That was. Whoa. That shot was uh, crazy. But yeah, uh, I have the instructions to mark, mark tighter. Uh, and yet, every time the, their attacker have like. 10 meters of Marty. Oh, Lapadula! Lapa oh my god, Lapadula! That was a fantastic chance. He really should. If he would have scored there, it would have been a game set match. But look at the fitness levels here of some of uh, the Arsenal players. You can clearly tell that uh, they are a little bit more tired than we are because of, uh, of the schedule. But we need to talk to them here, and I'm going to tell them you might be winning, but that could still change if your performance levels drop. Don't let that ha that happen. And yeah, it, it worked beautifully. So let's start the, the second half here ASAP. It's been a really, really good one. Of course, we got a little bit help because of um, that red card. But still, we have been performing very well. Lapadula into the box, back to Paslak, and nothing. Damn it, game. Why did you do that for me? I found the source of a free kick instead. Easily cleared by defense, but Sosa picks it up again. And so all the way back. Alberto Moreno, I'm not sure what he's doing on the right flank, but it is Chamberlain. And it, I believe that's like the third time we hit the crossbar today, isn't it? It must be around the third time. And here instead we have Arsenal here with throw in Roberto Firmino, Bobby breaks through. Get some help from Jedlin, Jedlin, Belbeck, and uh, another save by Joe Hart. Another time that we're clearly not marking tighter because he had so much space. Uh, I think we are going to sub the Chamberlain there. No, don't risk anything. I have a young uh, Neva uh, here on the on the bench, and he's from our youth team because we don't have any other options for this uh, position. Um, and I brought him in. You might remember him when when the Ox was out for like a month. Uh, I brought him in as a backup for Bowen, and he's really not uh, Premiership level, but he has a great potential, and uh, I think this is a right timing to, to let him play some. So let's see, who else is playing like garbage? Gnabry is playing really bad, so I think we'll have to go with you. 6.6 .6 rating is he's just not good enough, so let's bring in Benson. 
Ah, that's another winger. I feel like um, the first thought, look at this, 17 shots. 17 shots, that's just crazy compared to Arsenal's five. We haven't really been bombarding them. Um, Lapadula, does something has happened there. He looks really tired, so maybe, maybe we should go with him. Um, yeah, I think we could bring in Keane. And uh, Keane is, of course, breathing down Lapadula's neck here for a spot uh, as, a, as a main striker. For next season, if nothing happens, even if Lapadula wins the top goal scorer, Keane will be our main choice because he needs to play and he's really, really, really good. And we are one minute left of extra time. Carbo intercepts it. Uh, Svensson, will we see something happen before uh, the, the full-time whistle? It's 30 seconds left. And it's a long, long, long cross by Arsenal for Bobby Firmino. Bobby Firmino actually breaks through here a bit, but we have the number advantage. But once again, some crappy, crappy marking here. And uh, we are actually under some serious pressure here. Intercepted though by Afonso Sosa, Branaga, Alberto Moreno. Going for Svensson. Svensson moves the ball forward. What are you doing? Are you going to try to dribble all the way through? But it's a full-time whistle. And yeah, we got some help from that red card. But we completely dominated this game. I'm very pleased. And I'm going to tell the lads. I'm actually going to go a bit passionate here. Because this is such a huge win for us. Because I don't believe we've ever beaten Arsenal before in this series. And if I'm wrong, uh, let me know in the comments. But, but I think this was the, the first time ever we beat them. And it's always a bit special when, when you beat uh, another team for the first time. So uh, let's take a look here at the league table. And look at this right now. Right here, right now, we are in Dreamland. And Dreamland is, of course, a Champions League spot. But, and that's a big, big but, uh, West Ham has one less game played. And if they win, they could overta they will overtake us. And Liverpool also has one less uh, played. And if they win, they will overtake us if they score uh, enough goals. But for now, we, let's just enjoy this. We are in Dreamland. Lapadula, still top goal scorer. And that's it for this episode. As always, thank you so much for sharing your time with me. And I'll see you in the next episode.